Friends and comrades, on behalf of Ergi, I would like to welcome you all here to tonight's Ergi's Dura public event. The focus of tonight's discussion will be around internment. Our speakers will cover internment histori historically, female internees, and modern day internment. In our panel, we have Steve Murney. Steve Murney is an Ergi activist from Uri. He was arrested in November 2012 and interned by Roman before his release in November 2014. Steve will discuss his experience of modern-day internment. Angel Nelson. Angel Nelson. Nelson has been involved in the Republican movement since the 1970s and was one of the first female internees. Angel has been a councillor for a number of years in the Lisburg Council. And then we have Kevin Hannaway and Francie McGuigan, two of the hit hooded men. Francie and Kevin were, the two, were two of 12 men subjected to torture techniques by the British Army in the first wave of internment in 1971. Francie was interned for six months before becoming the first internee to escape. Kevin, who was involved in the Republican movement from the 1960s, will be one of a handful of people who will be able to, to discuss their very unique uh, experience of internment, and that he was interned from the first wave of internment in 1971 until the burning of the cages in 1975. I'll now pass you over to Francie McGuigan to start tonight's discussion. Thank you. Glad to see so many young people here too. The Republicans still definitely wasn't talking about you, did it? <laughs> <coughs> it's just, I'm going to ask you the question, but I don't want anybody to answer it. Just, if you know the answer, put your hand up. What was Sellafield called prior to its present name? Anybody know the answer to that? <laughs> right, say about three people. It's actually called Windscale. Now it rings a bell, you don't remember. The same way with the British royal family, it was in 1913 it was changed the name of Windsor. It was a German name which I can't pronounce before that, but it didn't suit, so they changed it. You now don't have the Special Powers Act, you have the anti internment or anti-terrorism act, which is the same thing. They just do the same thing. You now don't have, they don't have internment. Now at some stage they changed that from internment to detention. And now, now they have it under the pretext of remand, as Stephen will bear witness to. Stephen's among only one of many that have been, Republicans have been held on false charges, held in prison. Conditions before release, before bail conditions like that, you just simply couldn't meet. You were to be tagged, treated as a criminal, you can't live at home, you have to live away from home, you can't associate with this man, you can't associate with that woman. You, just totally alien to everything republic and alien to the whole idea of freedom. So just, <clears throat> as I say, that they changed the names. You don't have Castle Ray and Palace Barracks now. You have the Antrim Bowling Centre. It's the same thing, just all over again. We talk about Kevin and Megan through <coughs> torture, but we went through torture. You have the same thing happening today. And again, what is torture? What happened to Stephen was torture. What happened to his family was still at home was torture. What's happened in our day in the past couple of days, again, is torture. This thing of raiding homes, smashing up homes, dragging men away from their wives, children. And that it's still going on. And that in itself is torture. Just doesn't have the same consequences of somebody getting physically stood against the wall or getting battered. It's still torture. And again, it's still Republicans today, in this so-called peace process that we have, Republicans are still suffering. And when you put your head above the parapet, you are there, you're classified as a Republican, you're open to any of that uh, to have. And I say this thing of changing names, like this man went to bed one night in Long Cash, waking up the following morning, he was in Her Majesty's prison in Mays. Another night himself, was Mickey here, went to bed as internees, waking up the next morning to be told they were no longer internees, you're now detainees. Stephen was dragged in, was neither an internee nor a detainee, he was a man prisoner, same thing, they wanted them offside, they just took them away. So these are the things, what they've done, they've changed the names, changed the words, the conditions, the things are still the same, there's nothing that's changed <coughs> except the names. They just changed the names right down the whole line. And we as Republicans, and I suppose as Irish, Irish people, have come to accept this sort of treatment. We as Republicans maybe stand up against it, but we're not shocked when it happens. We are not shocked when a man is lifted out of his home at half two, three o'clock in the morning and put in prison, charged with ridiculous false charges. 
we actually come to accept these sort of things? And I, I think we have to get the word out there to everybody that this isn't good enough. What they're doing with the prisoners at the moment, restricted movement, strip searches, 10 of our friends and comrades died to oppose this and thought we had it won. Billy McKee had a hunger strike in 72 to get political status and got it. In 75, the British government just wiped it off the sheets again and tried to criminalise us all again. The boys went through the, the blocks, through the dirty protest, and just take a second and think about what their men went through. Four and a half years in a cell with a blanket, and that was it. No wash facilities, nothing visits restricted. There was, and again, when we went out and protested, we didn't put an end to it. Ten men lost their lives fighting for that right. And eventually we'll, we'll go through that. But the same thing's back on again today. And again, it's been accepted by the Irish people. And I, I, I think there's a, an inherent weakness in it that we were proud to accept this sort of thing. Go back to the idea of internment. Um, when I was arrested for internment, I wasn't shocked or I wasn't... I sort of accepted, right, this is determined I'm going to be interned. And that was only because I'd been brought up in a Republican household where I'd heard the jail stories and heard all this, and I can't accept it. And when my was dragged, I was hitting the stump with the butt of a rifle and dragged out of the bed, given a pair of trousers to put on. That was that I was dragged out. As I was being dragged out, they were taking my father, who was over 60 at the time, they were dragging him too, and he just lay down, he wouldn't. Uh, but they dragged him onto the street and left him lying in the street. My mother wasn't at home that particular night because she was in Armagh prison. And my mother, too, in my opinion, was interned because she had, all she had done, she had a blackberry on her, and she was carrying a horror, and she got six months for that and she got six months probation. She refused to sign the bail bond for the probation. So she had to do the second six months. When she got remission on the first six months, she only done four in that, but she refused to sign the bail bond was six months. The release date was the 28th of December. Now, rapists, murderers, the greatest criminals of God's earth, if they have a release date, somewhere between the 18th, to Jan 18th of December and the 7th of January, are released pre-Christmas. My mother was released on the 28th of December. And again, that's something that applies, again, the Irish Republicans, that's something... I'm not saying we have tolerated, but we've come to accept it as norm, you know, and I think it's a great responsibility as all now to oppose these sort of things and go on and say, now, I'm the, I'm the eldest of seven children. Each member of the family, including mother and father, have been in prison. My mother had a charge against her, my youngest brother had a charge against her, and my, my only sister had a charge against her. That's three out of the nine. The other six were all interned. My father for the second time in his life. Um, so that, that in itself is a form of torture to the family. Like My youngest brother and sister, when we were all in, they were 13 and 14. The authorities tried to take them into custody this sort of thing, children's rights or something, they were trying to take them, but the neighbours fought with them and took them out. And the neighbours looked after them until my mother was released. And that awakening of the Irish people at that time with internment has since died away. Um, I have my own views on why that has happened. It's, I think former comrades of ours have not done sufficient work in highlighting what's going on today. You know, and I, I think any of us that know any of them Every chance you get, mention it to them, bring it up to them, embarrass them about it. Because if anywhere within their bones they have a Republican bone in their body, they must feel a sense of embarrassment about what's happened today and them not doing sufficient work about it. So as I say, I, I only spent six months in long case, thank God. Kevin and Mickey here. They were actually the two longest, two of the, there was four internees that went in to start and done the longest period. Mickey and Kevin here with two of them, um, both of them two steps along myself and through the Hooter treatment. Um, <coughs> the Irish government eventually took the case to the European Commission 
<coughs> the European Commission found the British government guilty of torture. The British government refused to accept this and brought it to the European Court. And in the European Court, their decision on it was, wasn't torture, it was degrading and inhumane treatment. One of their definitions of torture was that people doing it must take a sense of pleasure out of it or enjoyment out of it. We're trying to bring that back to Europe now. We're in the process of trying to bring it back to Europe to have that opposed, to have it reversed, because it's the same type of torture still going on throughout the world today. In fact, the American government have used it in a case where they were about Guantanamo Bay and about Abu Ghabi prison, where they were using the same techniques. The Americans said it's not torture. The European court deemed it human rights, uh, deemed it degrading and inhumane treatment. So. We think it's very important to bring it back again to have the British government convicted off it and stop other countries throughout the world using this as an excuse, which they have been doing. As regards what went on in the actual hood of treatment, I think Kevin here will give you a description of that better than me because if I start talking to you all night. Um, so at the minute I'll hand you over to Kevin. But again, go back to my point at the start about the name change. The only thing that has changed in Ireland today is the names, and that includes the names up in Stormont. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they've changed too. Yeah. You know, there's now Murphy's up there and Kelly's up there, and you know, so <laughs> I'll, I'll get angry now if I keep talking again. <laughs> so I'll hand you over to Kevin here, and Kevin will give you a bit about his own experiences, which I shared and Mickey shared about what he went through, about what we all went through. Kevin also, by the way, um, you have to say this, don't ever quote it outside this, so he was one of the men guilty of burning the damn place. <laughs> 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 That's it. Mickey <laughs> 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 said he didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll hand you over to Kevin and let Kevin take it on from here.